Should you buy Anthem? Well, it's right there in the title, so I won't beat around the bush. I believe wholeheartedly that anyone with even a hint of doubt should avoid the title for at least a few months. Before going further, let me clarify something. If you are currently enjoying Anthem, do not internalize this criticism. When I highlight problems with the game, I am not saying you as a person are flawed because you enjoy an objectively flawed product. I am simply answering a question I have now been asked likely thousands of times. And that question is, do I think Anthem is worth a purchase? The answer is absolutely not. And my goal with such an abrasive stance is to offset some of the unbelievably disingenuous garbage I have seen recently from other creators recommending this game as anything other than an unfinished mess. I'd like to start by hearkening back to the days before digital downloads and online patching, during what I like to think of as the golden age of gaming. Even just a matter of years ago, demo discs would be attached in the backs of certain magazines. Physical discs were the primary medium, and games were either complete and polished on launch day, or they failed. Since physical distribution was the only medium available, when launch day rolled around, there was no option to implement a day one patch. There was no shield against the criticism of, this game isn't finished, but I paid full price for it, what the hell. Since that time has faded away, for some reason, the gaming industry has become the only digital entertainment genre that blatantly sells unfinished and incomplete products. Apply this same sort of scenario to any other industry and it starts to become glaringly obvious, especially digital industries. Imagine watching a Marvel movie, but halfway through, the special effects stop working. And when some audience members start to express annoyance, other audience members shush them and say, the special effects will be here in a few months. You don't really expect them to be done, do you? Imagine the adult entertainment industry, where someone purchases a scene and then near the conclusion of that scene, if you know what I mean, the audio glitches out and does not work, or the video cuts to black and requires you to restart the whole thing to fix it. Would that not completely ruin the experience? Now imagine if this degradation of quality were an ever-progressing phenomenon, and over time you could quite literally see the products becoming worse and worse right under your very eyes, and take longer and longer to be deserving of your money, and yet somehow it's still accepted and considered normal. Anthem is the epitome of that trend. It is the quintessential example of a product that just isn't finished and is not even close to consumer ready. Now I want to be very clear here, we've seen in the past how certain games go from disaster to success. The original Division game somewhat fits that criteria, Destiny and Destiny 2 both certainly do, and it may be possible with Anthem as well, but as it stands right now, and undoubtedly for a few months minimum, the game is not worth even a shred of consideration when deciding what is worth spending your money on and what isn't. So, finally, let's dive into some of the problems. First off, most of the missions are just copy-pasted content. Now, a certain degree of this is normal in any game. Reusing assets with a twist is relatively common, but Anthem takes it to a whole new level. In literally every mission, you are either gathering things and returning them to a location, or defending a specific point while a beacon charges, or explosives are primed, or whatever it may be. Nearly every single objective is a fetch quest or a point defense over and over and over. With the bulk of all content already blending together, it's time to pepper in some of the most lazy padding I have ever seen. Quests and objectives that require you to complete multi-kills, ultimate kills, or jump through other generic combat hoops in order to progress the main story again. Picture the type of content you would do as a completionist in any other game. Completely independent from main objectives and centering on trivial and relatively meaningless accomplishments or feats, whatever they may be. But it's a large part of Anthem's actual main campaign. I say large part because in a story that can be done in about 10 hours and probably takes 15 to 20 maximum, the middle segment that requires these feats to be accomplished is a multi-hour grind. The grind would not be so bad if the game worked properly, but it doesn't. When trying to get, for instance, 15 chests to complete one of the objectives, you are competing with your own team members and group mates. Your whole group doesn't get credit. Only the person opening the chest gets the credit. And before some wretched fanboys start crowing in the comment section, yes, this has been expressed as a bug and not working as intended, and they claim it will be fixed on the 22nd. The thing is, the full game is out already. Because of the emphasis on pre-order convolution and money-grubbing early access, the full game is already live and has been for days. So this idea that the real day one patch will fix everything has already turned into a broken record. It started with the VIP demo, where every criticism was dismissed as unnecessary and the game would be fixed within a week for the open demo. 
The open demo rolls around. Game still has most of the issues, but whatever, it's okay. Criticism isn't valid. It's just the demo. Demo, by the way, historically meaning a slice of the final product, which it was not. Still, fine, whatever. The claim was, it will be fixed on the 15th. This is an old build of the game. Okay, 15th rolls by, full game comes out, and almost all the same stuff is still just as broken. Now the defense is, the patch on the 22nd will fix it, you can't criticize yet. Well, okay, if you can't criticize when they offer a portion of content which is by definition supposed to give you the material to decide whether or not to purchase it, you can't criticize the second time they do that either, and you can't criticize when the full game is out because there is an update soon and the rest of the player base will get it on that day, when can you finally say, this game has too many problems? The answer is, you can say it whenever you want, you just have to be prepared for the drivel that diehard fans will inevitably spew out at anyone who isn't swooning over their precious new favorite title. Now let's talk about loading screens though and switch up the pace. There are just too damn many of them, and they are unbelievably long. The problem would not be a full stop issue if there was not also articles like this one, which have been in circulation for quite some time. Anthem's open world is completely seamless. This article could not be more of a lie. When flying the open world, you get loading screens. Switching pieces of your javelin, loading screens. Between every mission, loading screen. And again, this issue is exacerbated because glitches in dialogue and various cinematics, paired with connectivity issues, can lead to some players encountering a loading screen and actually missing the major cutscenes in the story, or the plot reveals, or the twists. You also have articles like this one, claiming that Anthem players are angry about loading screens and times, but there is a, quote, easy fix. The subheader claiming if you don't already have the equipment needed, it might cost you a bit of money. That is not an easy fix, for the love of God. What kind of anti-consumer garbage has this industry devolved into? The fix proposed is moving the game to an SSD, but not everyone has one, and the idea that you would buy a $60 game and then have the easy fix of buying further equipment just to make the load times palatable? This is idiocy, it's garbage, and it makes me sick. If you can get by everything I've already mentioned, it comes time to evaluate how you will be playing the game. If you have a dedicated team of allies, that's a really good start. Problem is, you will have to compete with them for the tedious objectives, which, yes, is apparently a bug, but it has begun to feel like every time someone criticizes anything, it gets dismissed as a bug, or not working as intended, which feels empty, hollow, and disingenuous. Regardless, if you have a team, that's excellent, because the content does not properly scale or balance based on group size. The matchmaking also has serious issues. There were multiple different times I would be placed in a stronghold scaled for four people by myself, and it was just not possible to do. I would quit, requeue, no one. No scaling, no teammates, nothing. And the same can happen with story missions as well. On the topic of general difficulty scaling, I've touched on this a few different times in past videos. The problem with Anthem stems from a glaring lack of endgame content. More on that in just a second, though. And the endgame content you do have access to only scales up through the difficulty tiers by increasing the enemy health and damage. So you have six difficulty settings that are all pretty much identical. On top of that, the largest piece of endgame content by far, which has been called raids by certain publications in another blatantly misleading maneuver, is strongholds. And there are only three strongholds. One is the spider boss that you play within two hours of starting the game. The next is literally the final mission of the campaign, just reused. And the third is new-ish, I guess. It's the one they've showcased a bunch of times on developer streams. Now let's talk about Fort Tarsus and story. Fort Tarsus is one of the most depressing hubs I've ever seen in a game ever in my entire life. I already said in my what's changed since the demo video it was bad because it felt like a crypt with no music anymore, but that really is just the start. Fort Tarsus and the inhabitants have no soul, no personality, and are simply annoying. An obstacle you must navigate to finally get to more gameplay since the gameplay can be quite fun. When news surfaced a while ago about how Anita Sarkeesian had consulted on Anthem and been brought into Bioware for meetings, I laughed and I thought, why though? Oh well, whatever, no big deal. Nope, I was wrong. It mattered. All of Fort Tarsus and the characters contained within it feel like the most whiny, oh my feelings are hurt sissies in any game I've ever played. It legitimately felt uncomfortable interacting with them. And for a Bioware game to have characters that irritating? Yikes. 
There are more bugs and technical issues than I can possibly condense, so I'll just list a few. Some friends of mine fell through the map a number of times. Disconnects are more common than feels comfortable. When you do disconnect, it can totally screw up story missions and cutscenes. Rubber banding is still a problem. Audio issues, frame rate drops, gun recoil glitches. When you die in a no respawn area, you have to force quit your game if no one revives you because you can't open any menus. They claim that one will be fixed on the 22nd, fine, whatever, but the list is unbelievably long. Little things also crop up everywhere you look, like you can't set a waypoint on the map. You just can't do it. You can't ping things for allies, you can't use any sort of ping system, so if you don't have voice comms, there is literally no communication whatsoever. And stuff like this, in 2019, with a game that's been in development since the release of Mass Effect 3, six years of development, not having this stuff, having hardly any endgame material whatsoever, being glitchy and buggy beyond belief, and all the other problems, it's just totally unacceptable. Now for the microtransactions. So what we see now in the store is eight or nine dollars down from the leaked screenshot of $20 that surfaced pre-release. The thing is, the skins we are seeing are epic, not legendary. So the fans rushing to the defense claiming that eight dollars is fine and that you earn coins fast enough to buy everything you want, something I originally thought as well, but turned out to be completely wrong. The fans defending these price tags are defending epic skins when legendary will cost more, more than the current eight or nine dollars in a $60 price tag game. Speaking of coins, the in-game currency starts off pretty fast. You earn a lot quickly. And I speculated that it probably would not slow down in endgame because that would make no sense. Well, I was wrong again. Seems like every single time I try to appease the fans and say something positive, I turn out to just be completely off base and incorrect. The coin drops dry up completely at endgame. Most of the earning challenges are one time only, and once you've gotten the rewards, that's it. So in the end, you will be earning a couple thousand coins per day, and when skins, epic skins by the way, not even legendary, cost over 60,000 coins, that's an entire month of grinding to get one skin. One non-legendary skin. That's it. The skins also share the currency with the crafting materials, so you would need to grind for that entire month never buying a single other thing, never spending what you've earned in order to get one non-legendary skin, and that's after logging in every single day to do the challenges for a month. To yet again answer the question I've been asked time and time again, do I recommend Anthem? No, not at all. Avoid this game. It isn't even worth a fraction of its $60 price tag right now. And if you really are interested, plus you happen to be on PC, get one month of Origin Premiere, play Anthem, and then cancel your Origin subscription. Anthem is a $15 game in its current state, admittedly with an absolute world of potential, but it's not there yet. As a final note, the game could end up being phenomenal at some point down the line, much like Destiny and Destiny 2. If you check back in six months from now, it may have received three or four huge updates that turn it into a well-deserving and amazing looter shooter. I don't dispute the potential that it has. I simply reject the current industry practice of releasing completely unfinished games and subsequently fixing them well after players have already paid. The idea that players should not be critical of Anthem right now is horseshit. If everyone thought that way, the industry would fall apart even more. And it's easy to turn the same sort of mentality right back on the fanboys as well. If you don't like my video and have nothing nice to say, you shouldn't write a comment. But that's equally as idiotic. All the fans whom I have upset will smash out some incoherent paragraph to make themselves feel better or justify their purchase, the same way that I will continue to produce videos that say negative things about badly made products, especially when those products have been built up to unrealistic heights by false advertising and faulty marketing. Real gameplay, by the way. Anyway, this one is going to have some fireworks. I expect roughly a one-to-one -one like to dislike ratio, 50-50, right down the middle. Basically, that's an atrocious rating for a YouTube video, and honestly, I don't care. It needed to be said. Anthem, in its current state, isn't worth your money. It's got gorgeous environments, sure, and a lot of great puzzle pieces, but that puzzle, metaphorically speaking, is sitting disassembled on the floor, and until it's put together, it won't show a beautiful picture. It will keep being a jumbled mess. Beware anyone telling you how good the game is, and if they are raving about how fantastic it is, check to see if they are an EA game changer. That might give a clue as to why. I no longer plan to cover Anthem extensively. I will probably play some more when they update it, 
I'll see if the performance is better. If they add new content, I might check in to see how it is. And if the legendary skins come out and they are, again, at the $20 price point, I might weigh in on that discussion or if there are any further large developments. I might even live stream it if they iron out the technical state, but I really don't see a short-term future for this game. Maybe long-term, but I'm skeptical. And right now, it's just bad. Anyways, that's it. Check out the links down below if you want to support. We have esports merchandise with custom name and gamer tags, some gaming communities, and other stuff as well. But that's more than enough. I've been rambling too long already. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.